Welcome you all to this coffee lecture about our new open access agreements and open access funding in general. By the way, this is the start of the ETH Library's 13th coffee lecture series. The menu for the next 10 minutes, I will present some insights on the changes to our open access funding and how you can proceed to get your scientific publications funded by ETH Library. After a brief overview of APC funding at ETH, I will introduce to you the two most relevant changes according to our new APC policy, followed by details about our, our newly agreed institutional funding options. Of course, there is still APC funding outside of these so-called transformative agreements that we have with the big publishers. However, this only refers to gold open access and I will show you how to apply for it. There should be enough time for questions after my presentation. In general, there are two main routes for open access funding, the gold and the hybrid route. Our agreements can include gold and hybrid journals. However, there are some agreements that only include hybrid journals and some others only gold. If an agreement exists, please check whether or not your journal is included in the agreement before submitting your paper. If you follow the link on the right to our open access manual, you will find comprehensive information on each agreement to avoid confusion, hopefully. In case you are still unsure, don't hesitate to contact the e-publishing group by email or phone. Contact information are displayed on the last slide. The main benefit of these agreements is reducing administrative work for, for both sides, the researchers and the libraries. To this end, workflows are set up for each agreement. To ensure that these workflows work properly, please always submit your paper with your ETH email address. Upon submission or after acceptance of your paper, you will have to sign a Creative Commons license if you decide to publish open access, which is the state of the art in scholarly publishing nowadays. And please note that at ETH Zurich, only corresponding authors are eligible for APC funding. You may have heard about our new APC policy at ETH, effective as of January 1st. Unfortunately, only a German version is currently circulating. The main changes affecting you as a researcher are A, that we want you to apply for APC funding from the SNSF if you or someone from the co-authors receive research funding by the SNSF. And B, that there is no APC cap any longer. Provision A refers primarily to third party funding in general and is mainly due to budget restrictions at ETH. The more open access publications can be funded by external funding agencies, the more of the whole ETH library cake is left for the rest, so to say. ETH has paid quite a lot of money in recent years for publications that could also have been financed by a third party funder. So this is a kind of call to action to increase the overall number of open access publications. It might seem like a contradiction simultaneously abolishing our APC cap, which was about $5,000 until the end of 2023. But thinking realistic in a world with ever increasing APCs, a cap is nothing more than an unfortunate obstacle to our aim of fostering open access publications. We negotiated four new agreements as of 2024, be it with, with publishers on the left of the slide or with certain journals. Let us now delve into the details of each agreement. Completely new is the agreement with the American Society of Mechanical Engineers, abbreviated ASME. ETH members publish free of charge in all 33 hybrid journals of ASME, and additionally in the ASME Open Journal. Like for the most of all agreements, the acceptance date is crucial to define whether a paper is funded in one of these journals or not. There is no annual quota in place. After you have submitted with your ETH email, select ETH as your affiliation, and once your paper is accepted, you will receive a request from ASME to sign the copyright transfer statement. 
This is choosing open access as the preferred publishing model and CC BY as the reuse license on top of the underlying copyright. As with ASME, we have a new contract with Optica, which allows all ETH members to publish free in its gold journal portfolio. Optica runs the PRISM submission system where you have to enter ETH as your primary affiliation. Should you or one of your co-authors have a SNSF grant, please decline funding by ETH and generate an invoice instead that can be uploaded directly to SNSF Kronos Hub to have your article paid for. Nature Communications and Scientific Reports are both imprints of Springer Nature. And since we have an existing agreement with this publisher, both journals are now included in the established workflow. For those who are familiar with this workflow, nothing has changed so far, or the other way around, the work is getting easier. Both are gold journals. This means if you receive funding from SNSF, please decline uh, APC funding from the ETH library and generate an invoice that can be uploaded directly to SNSF via its Kronos Hub. At least we should focus on financing outside the agreements. If your desired journal is not part of an agreement, but it's a gold journal, you can apply for APC funding via our application form. You can see a screenshot on of the form on the right hand side of the slide. The Directory of Open Access Journals, abbreviated DOAJ, indexes gold journals and can help you to figure out whether your journal is a gold or a hybrid journal. Hybrid journals are never indexed in the DOAJ. Once you submit the application form, we will access, assess whether or not the APC can be funded by ETH library. If we confirm the funding and you have already paid the APC, a reimbursement is possible, but it is easier for both sides when you simply send us the invoice for payment. To round off this coffee lecture, I would like to conclude. The previous existing APC cap for scientific articles and gold journals has been lifted. Submit papers always with your ETH email address. Use affiliation information as recommended by ETH Corporate Communications. And last but not least, check the eligibility criteria in our open access manual before submitting a paper. Whenever you feel the need to clarify issues about open access publishing and funding, send us an email or contact us by phone. Before you can ask questions right away, I would like to draw your attention to our next coffee lecture, focusing on the important research data management guidelines at ETH, held by my lovely colleague and host today, Julian Diderke. The lecture, lecture will take place next Wednesday, same time, same Zoom link. Thank you for your attention and I wish you good luck with publishing. <laughs>